At one time PM, Lerwick Lifebot, RNLV, Michael and Jane Vernon, slipped their moorings and proceeded on service. The six lifeboat crew were all seated and strapped in as the lifeboat made moderate speed in very rough seas and storm force winds, which were gusting the violent storm force 11. Passage was made well to the south of Bard Head, Bresse, to avoid the worst of the extreme seas. As they cleared Bard Head, they heard the Coast Guard advise Green Lily to drop her anchors and to evacuate as many of the crew as possible. At 1.35pm the helicopter arrived on scene but could not work the casualty while she was beam on to the seas because of the violent motion. Five minutes later the tug Tasty arrived on scene and immediately attempted to pass a tow. A heaven line was quickly passed but there were only two men on the deck of the Green Lily who were attempting to heave the tow line in by hand. The lifeboat arrived on scene at 1.50pm. Green Lily was now only a mile and a half offshore. The lifeboat stood by whilst the two crew continued to try to heave in the tow. As Tasty began to pay out the tow, a huge sea lifted the bow of Green Lily to port whilst pitching the tug in the opposite direction. The winch could not pay out the tow quickly enough and the line parted. Green Lily was no less than a mile offshore. Cox and Clark advised the master to drop his anchors immediately to slow the drift to shore. After a further 10 minutes, the starboard anchor was let go. This caused the ship's head to swing 45 degrees into the wind and so reduced the drift towards the shore. However, the ship was rolling violently with seas breaking right over her and it was impossible for the helicopter to get near. Cox and Clark asked the skipper to drop the port anchor, but this was not possible. The ship was now in 35 metres of sea and only 4.5 cables offshore. Cox and Clark decided that he would have to make some sort of approach on the casualty if anyone was to be saved. He contacted the master and urged him to get his crew ready for evacuation before it was too late. Cox and Clark and 2nd Cox and Simpson took up position on the flying bridge. The other crew members positioned themselves on the starboard side in order to assist survivors as they abandoned ship. The lifeboat approached within 20 to 30 feet of the ship's side. The two vessels were moving violently in the huge seas and the lifeboat rose above the ship's deck before dropping below her waterline in the next trough. Operating at the very limits of his boat's capabilities and his experience, Cox and Clark drove the lifeboat's starboard shoulder alongside. Constant danger was the two vessels rolling together with potentially catastrophic consequences. Weather conditions were making the situation almost untenable for the lifeboat, with 15 metre seas breaking over the casualty and the rocky shore drawing ever closer. Cox and Clark made numerous attempts to put the lifeboat into a position where the survivors could be evacuated, often having to abort runs alongside due to the violent motion of the vessels. Whenever the decks were mostly level, the lifeboat crew would grab a survivor and literally pull them over the ship's gunnels and onto the lifeboat's deck. Each time a man was saved, Cox and Clark swung away and prepared for another run. The lifeboat was now operating an ever-decreasing amount of sea room. The shoreline was masked by white water as the huge seas hit the rocks. Whilst this was happening, the Mare's champion arrived on scene and managed to grapple the starboard anchor cable. After paying out his tow line, the tug began to tow the casualty. Five crew had been rescued, but another ten were still on board the ship, which was less than 200 yards from the shore. With Green Lily now head to wind, the helicopter rescue Lima Charlie went in to evacuate the remaining crew members. Cox and Clark took the lifeboat clear and stood by. Just after this, the anchor cable parted and there was now nothing to prevent the Green Lily being driven ashore. At 2.55pm the helicopter reported that all 10 crew had been lifted off, but winchman Bill Deacon had been lost over the side. The lifeboat could not get any nearer to the shore in the conditions, and Cox and Clark made the decision to take the five very sick survivors to Lerwin. They were landed at 3.20pm, and as soon as they were safely ashore, the lifeboat returned to the scene, arriving at 3.58pm. Cox and Clark then took the lifeboat in as close as he could to the shore, but it was now getting dark and the Green Lily was already breaking up in the extreme conditions. The huge seas were tossing debris around and Cox and Clark was very concerned about the safety of his crew. During the search, a huge sea broke over the lifeboat, completely engulfing the decks and leaving a film of oil everywhere. Cox and Clark decided to abandon the search.